Praise the Lord. Viewers, you are welcome. This is our program, Primarita Counseling. And I am your counselor, Pastor Dr. Mrs. Cecilia Gimisola Ubishaki. And we continue in this program by discussing family roles and responsibility. Family roles and responsibilities. Today we are going to talk about the role or the position of the husband, the father, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for another time learning at your feet. Lord, we pray that you open our eyes to the truth you will show us throughout your word today as we discuss the role and responsibilities of the father the husband in the family. Give us ears that we hear, hearts that we understand, and the grace to do what you want us to do, even as the head of the family, as fathers, as husbands, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. The role and responsibilities of the Father. We are talking about settlement in marriage. That is the theme now, now that we are married, now that we are Mr. and Mrs. It is very, very important that you know who you are, your role, in what position are you standing in the family, and what are your responsibilities? What is expected of you? You know, people say, to whom much is given, much is expected. God, who created marriage and made the man the head, in fact, is the first creature created by God. God has given him a lot of responsibility. He has put him in a very vital position. And this, with this position comes a lot of responsibilities. And we pray that God, who has made the man, the husband, the father, will give him all that is needed to be what God has created him to be in Jesus' name. Before we continue, let me read the passage. We are reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 1. I will read verse 26 and 27. 26 and 27. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. The role and responsibilities of the husband in the family. Who is this man called husband? Why did God first create him? Why did God create him in his own image? Why did God favor him and made a woman for him and make him the head of the family? What is it that God is expecting him to do? That is what we want to talk about. Now, for every family, every member of the family must know who he or she is and what is, is expected of, he, of him or her in the family. And we are talking of the family. We are talking of marriage as ordained by God. The number one, I remember we discussed hierarchy in the family. 
the number one member of the family of God is the man. The man. And we just read the word of God that says, it's God that decided to make that man in his own image. It is God that decided to say, you are number one. You have the authority. You have the dominion. It is God that created man in his image. So we must know who the man is. This man we are talking about, the first creature of God, the one that God decided to create. It's not just out of anyhow. He, God, they sat down, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and they said, let's make somebody like us who will be down there representing us, who will take charge, who will be in charge of everything, starting from the home, and we take care of the environment and do what we want on earth so that God will be glorified on earth as it, as it, as it is in heaven. So God created man in his image. So the man is a person created by God. He came from God. And we read how he was made, you know, in Genesis chapter 1. You can go and read it. Out of the ground, God, you know, took him. And after molding him, God breathed unto him the breath of life. And when it came to marriage, God saw him that he was good, but he wasn't happy. He created a woman out of him. Can you see how important the man is? The man is from the ground, but the woman is from the man. The man is here to represent God. God gave him authority over everything, including the family. He is number one. We want to thank God for every man out there. You need to know that you are very, very, very important to God and, of course, to your family. One, you are, a, you are in the image of God. If you are tall, in that family, God is tall. If you are short, God is short. Whatever you are, you are created in his image to represent him in your family. You are the representative of God in that family. You are to work for God. You are to take charge of the family for him. You are the husband. And we are made to know that the word husband comes from some Anglo-Saxon, you know, origin. And it means house band, something that used to bind the house. I mean, something, when you, call, when you talk of bind, band, you use it to bind things together. You are the Husband, you are the one that binds the house together. You bring the house together. You bring the family together. When you stand, the family stands. And you will not fall. You will not fail. But when you fail, the family fails. When you fail, when you falter, the family falters. In fact, <laughs> without you, there is no family. Amen. That is how important you are to God. Without the man. There can be no family. And that's why we have a lot of families, they're struggling today, especially where we have the man absent, where the rep representative of God is not there to bind the family together, to bring them together. So man, you are very, very important. You are the one that makes everything to work in the family. You see? Um, it's a Yoruba proverb. I won't say it in Yoruba. I will try to explain it. That when there are no elders in the society, the society will not go well. And when there is no husband in the family, the, 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 the family is crumbled. And that is the truth. You are the one that makes everything happen. You determine. You determine. Why well, are you not the one that, that, that shows mommy, your wife, to marry? You are the one now. Were well, you not the one that also gave life to her, you know, and now you are father? You determine everything. So just know this, that you are very, very important to God. And every member 
of the family should take note of this. The husband, daddy, is number one of the family and is representing God. So you better be careful how you deal with him because God is behind him. God is with him. God is helping him. He will continue to help him. And as long as he looks up to God, he cannot fail. He will not fail in Jesus' name. The man, the father, is very, very important. He is husband first before he comes to be the husband. I mean, the a father. So as the husband, especially for those of us that have just married, you are in charge of the family. You are in control. You are representing God. After you is God. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you are to take care of the people under you, your wife and your children. You, these are the responsibilities of the man. You need to take charge. You are the man who has authority in your home, and you must use it well. Okay? What are your responsibilities? You have known who you are, your role. You are number one. Your position, you are number one, and you are representing God. Take it. You are representing God, and God never fails. You will not fail as you look unto your God who has sent you to that family to represent him in Jesus' name. God says you are the head. You are the head and you will remain the head. And the head determines everything that will happen to the body. That's how important you are to the family. If you look at your own head, if you are watching me, look at my head. This is my head. From where I put my hand now, from my neck up is my head. God forbid, if this head is cut off, what will become of this body? Useless. It is useless. It can be of no use either to man or to the woman. So the head must stand. You are the head. You must take your position as the head of the family. And that is re responsibility number one. Take your stand as the head, as the leader of the family. And when you look at this head, your position, with your position, a lot of responsibility is attached to that position. Because it's not just being the head, just the head. Do you know? Look at the head very well. You are the head, husband. Look at the head. Where do you find the mouth? In the head. So, <laughs> where do you find the eyes? The head. You look. You look for the house. You are the research person of the family. When you talk of the mouth, it's food. You feed the family. You hear from God. You are the the priest of the family. You hear from God and with your mouth you declare the counsel of God to the family. Ah, when you talk of the head, it's not just being head. The head <laughs> is a, with, with a lot of responsibility and it's good for you to know that right from the beginning, especially those of us that have just married or if you are going to marriage, to be a husband is not a joke. It's not just saying, I love you, I love you. It's with a lot of responsibilities. And that's why we say, before you marry, you must be ready. You must be prepared. Because it's not just sleeping with a woman. You have to take care. It's not just having children. You have to take care of them. In fact, the Bible says it, that if you don't take care of your family, you are worse than an infidel. And I pray no husband will be an infidel in Jesus' name. So man, you are the head of the family and you are taking care of the family. You are to love your wife. Responsibility. You are to love your wife. The Bible says that. Ephesians 5.25. The Bible says you should love sacrificially. You should love your wife to the extent that you so nourish her, you will cherish her, you will bless her materially, spiritually. And you know what? It will come back to you because the Bible says it, it will now reflect the glory of God. You know, when you take care of your wife, when you cherish her, when you love her, when you supply all her needs, you are not God, but you are representing God. What you don't have, you can cry to Father and Father will answer you. You, you feed her, clothe her. 
Let her live in a good house, not in a house that has no window. We have seen a lot of things, you know, people living in a house, no window, no window in the room where they are sleeping. Huh. That is not good because the health, health is important. Somebody sleeping in a, in a house without window, you can't be healthy, you cannot cannot be healthy. So in the same room, they will cook in the front, they stay at the back, they take their bath. Why? That is not proper. God will not be happy with such a man because God, when he created you in his image, he bless you with everything that you need. So you should bless your wife with everything that is needed to make a home. And the Lord will help you. You will not fail in Jesus' name. So love your wife. The Bible says you even love your, your, your wife as yourself. Because when we think of it, we don't hate ourselves. We take good care of ourselves. No matter how hard you want to take care of yourself. One book says, love your wife. That if you love your wife, you, you, you love your, if you love your wife, you love yourself. So if you love your wife, you will take care of yourself. You are taking care of yourself by loving your wife. And you are so to make your wife happy. How can you make her happy? You make her happy by supplying all the needs that she, you are not God, but God is able. Proverbs 5, 18 says, let the fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Hmm. To be a man is not a joke. And that is why marriage is not for boys. There are, it's a race to be run. And you have to be prepared and run the race very well. You have to meet the needs of your wife physically sexually, emotionally, you have to do as if you are the head indeed, because the head must be the head. The head must supply all that is needed. And the Lord will help you. You will not fail in Jesus' name. First Peter 3, 7, you have to listen to your wife. You have to respect, you have to honor her. Number four, you have to work hard to provide for the needs of the family. I said that earlier, First Timothy 5, 8. The spiritual needs of the family, of course, when you have gotten married, you have met each other's physical need, coming together in your own house. Very, very important. You are no longer living under the same roof with your parents. So the house need has been met. That's the shelter. What of food in the head? We have the motto, you need to provide what the family will need. It is your main responsibility. Don't shift it to the woman. No matter how meaga you think your salary is, you need to work hard. That is to, how to be a man. To be a man is not just by word of mouth. You should work hard. You should work hard. You should make sure you have enough to feed the family. You should meet the spiritual needs of the family. It is not proper for the wife and the children to be praying and daddy will still be sleeping. No, you are the priest of the family, the chief priest. You are the one that should gather them together. You are the one that should be leading the prayer. And at times the mommy can lead, children can also read Bible passages, they can pray. That is how to be the man. Spiritual needs of the family must be met. You must intercede for your family. That is a very good responsibility of the man. Number five, you must be a role model. It is not do as I say, but do as I do. You need to be a role model in every way. If you are telling your children not to tell lies, make sure no lie is found in your mouth. Whatever you want your children to be, so you should be for them. And that is how to be a good husband. That is how to be a good man. And I pray for you that the Lord will help you. You will not fail in Jesus' name. So the role of a man, you are number one. You are the head of the family. You are small letter G-O-D to the family. The family looks up to you. You are the one that bring them together. You bind them together and you will not fail in Jesus' name. Your responsibilities, Make sure you shelter them, give them good place to live. You, you give them clothing, 
They don't have to wear expensive clothing, but please let your wife dress well because she radiates your glory. The glory of, of man is God or is Christ, and the glory of the woman is the man. Your, your, the glory of your wife is you. When they see you, they should be able to glorify God. Hallelujah. When they see your wife, they should be able to glorify God. Clothe and feed your wife properly. It is your male responsibility. The woman can help. Of course, that's why she was created. God created the woman to help the man. But she is a helper. You are to feed your family, please. That is how to be a man. And you have to relate with your wife sexually. That is how to be a man. Whatever it takes, <laughs> especially some African men, you know, I, I can't, you can't say that. You need to do, take all that is needed for you to be able to relate with your wife, especially Christians, when you know that your wife cannot go somewhere else. And woman, you know this man cannot go somewhere else. And he's a man. And the Lord will help you. You will not fail. In the mighty name of Jesus, you need to take care of your children. And that's why you know, we talked about it during the, I mean, when you are uh, preparing to wed, is this no longer how many, it is how well. You don't have to have many children now. Take care, I mean, have the one that you will be able to take care of. Good school, not just school. There are schools and there are schools. Good school for your children. And you must make sure they are educated to a certain level, not just primary school and then you, you throw them to the road to be selling things or they will be, no, don't do that because you are coming back to them. We are going to talk about children too. You are coming back to them when you are old. You better prepare them so that when you are old, you will be happy. You will, be, you, you will thank God that ah, I trained my children and they are now they are the one that is blessing me. The Lord will help you, man. You are very precious to God. You are very precious to the family. You are a determiner. When you are there, you will help your wife. You will help your children and you will be there. You will not, you will not abstain. You will not run away. Many men have run away from their homes now because they say things are difficult. It's because you are not looking unto God. When you look unto God and you are not lazy, when you look unto God, God will help you because you are representing him in the family. The Lord will bless you. Every man there will appreciate you. You are there. And that is why we are there. We women are there because you are there. Without you, there's nothing we can do. I mean, we can't. There's nothing because you are the head. You are the banding that is bringing the family, the children, the wife together. The Lord will bless you. He will make his face to shine upon you. You will not fail God in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you know you have not been doing your responsibility, you better talk to him. He's the one that sent you there. He's the one, our, our God, people say, God will send you and will back you up. God will back you up. Repent of whatever wrongs you have been doing and the Lord will help you. You will no longer fail in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you don't, you have not yet accepted Jesus, give your life to him. He's the one that will help you by the power of the Holy Ghost. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.